Hey everyone, this is Steve, curator of the MHS Military Collection, with another episode of Keep Em Rolling, a channel dedicated to preserving the memory of what the United States Armed Forces did during World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Now, this episode is part one of a three-part series dealing with the GI's Foot Locker. I had originally planned it to only be a two-part series, however, I found out there was so much information to cover, I decided to make it a three-part series. So, part one of the GI Foot Locker. All right, everyone. This is the Foot Locker that I chose to fill as part of my Foot Locker project. I chose this Foot Locker for a couple of very important reasons. Number one, it is a super early pre-war Foot Locker. It has the data tag on here. It dates it to April of 1936. But this Foot Locker was in use as it has a wartime repaint. You can see that kind of dark OD green, and the entire Foot Locker is covered in that paint. Everything. The Foot Locker is intact. If we look at the side here, you can see that it still has the original leather handles and it has them on both sides and they're not broken or falling apart, which is really cool. All of the hardware is intact, so we have these heavy duty latches here on the front. But I think the one thing that sold me the most on this foot locker was this right here. It's got the original lock on it and it came with, <laughs> you guessed it, the original key for the lock. And what is so cool is the key has a soldier's data disc on it. Basically it's got a little souvenir disc that he had made that has his name and it has his rank and it has a serial number on here. You can see that. Which is really cool. And my guess is he probably put it on here to keep from losing the key. And the key actually works. Ready? To open the foot locker. You just don't find the foot lockers like this with the original key. So that was the biggest selling point. All right, I'm going to reposition here and then we're going to open the foot locker. All right, everybody, I've repositioned myself and I have a little table set up to set the camera on so I can show you things up close. And we are ready to open this foot locker up. Now, remember, I decided to create a foot locker based on a GI in the regular infantry in that kind of mid to late 1942 range. So here we go. Now when we first open it up, what you see is you have a tray on the top that has two compartments, a left compartment and a right compartment. In the left compartment, we have primarily personal hygiene items. And in the right compartment, we have primarily uniform care items. And I set the Foot Locker up like this based on my interviews with various veterans who could remember uh, what was in their Foot Locker. Most veterans remember they had a Foot Locker. Very few remember what was in the Foot Locker or how it was arranged. So I kind of pieced together what several veterans who remembered elements of their Foot Locker told me to come up with this layout. Now, we're going to focus on this left compartment here. We're going to start with some light reading material. We have a Blondie comic. This is a wartime comic here. You can see it's Blondie on the home front. A wonderful comic. This is probably one of my favorite things right here, but this is not mine. This actually belongs to my wife. She found this several years ago in an antique shop. She fell in love with it, and she's been gracious enough to loan it to me to put into my footlocker uh, for the display. So thank you very much. Now, as we go into the footlocker, we have it broken down into different areas here. This kind of upper left corner is uh, dress uniform care or uniform care. We have a shaving area. We have foot care. We come down to more uniform care with a whisk brush to get the dust off your uniform. We have a PX purchase flashlight. It's an Ever Ready inside this little PX bag. We have handkerchiefs, a park lighter, a pocket watch, and then we have back here, we have tooth care, and then we have body care with a PX purchased soap tin. Now I'm going to set the camera down. I'm going to kind of show you different elements of the Foot Locker here. We'll start off with this button bag. It's a service button bag. still has the original tag on it. And the tag gives you kind of the inventory of what's supposed to be in the bag. And the bag is, well, it's complete. And it has every button you could ever need to keep your uniform in optimal service condition. So, underneath the button bag, 
we have a button card. This is also a PX purchase, and you can see the hole here on the top where it would have hung on a peg in the PX. This one covers buttons for your shirt, your jacket, which would have been the model 1941 field jacket, your underwear, your fly, and your trousers. I love the buttons on the card. The sheen on these are just beautiful. I also love the fact that a few of them are missing. They were actually used. Now, underneath the button card, we have a sewing kit. This would have been a PX purchase or maybe a gift from a loved one at home. We'll open it up here so you can see on the inside. This is unused. We have all the thread you could ever need to sew on buttons. We have extra buttons here, also some safety pins and the like, the thimble for sewing. And over here we have needles and a beautiful pair of scissors. Once again, this kit was never used. Just fabulous condition. I'm going to show you what's underneath the sewing kit. Move the camera back over here. Underneath the sewing kit, we have this little personal kit here with a metal mirror and a comb. The metal mirror was for you to take on hikes or when you're out uh, you know, on the march, and it was something that you could still use without worry about breaking glass. Once again, that was a PX purchase or possibly a gift from home. Now next to that is the shaving area. We have a shaving brush for mixing up your shaving cream. The soldier hadn't quite gotten rid of or wasn't quite willing enough to get rid of the brush because what's happened is a lot of shaving cream is being replaced with what's called brushless shaving cream. It's a box of mole. It even tells you down here it's mole shaving cream. And what's cool about this box is right here it says special service package for the armed forces only. I found this a couple of months ago in an antique shop for 50 cents. Just a fantastic original box. The weird thing is there's nothing inside. It's empty. Why someone saved this all these years is absolutely beyond me, but hey, I'm glad they did because it makes a great addition to my foot locker. And I can always upgrade and look for the tube of, of uh, shaving cream, but for now, this works great. Of course, to shave, you need your razor. This right here is a star razor. It's a safety razor. They were still using straight razors at this time, but a lot of GIs were switching over to a safety razor. This one has the head that would screw on to the handle, which is right here. And then it has the razor blade that would go in and give you a nice clean shave. It's in this handy dandy little uh, case here. And this actually came from a veteran. So I know this is a wartime production, uh, World War II. Now, the powders that we have, we have a standard can of foot powder, but we also have this right here. And this powder was meant to help with GIs who came down with something that plagued a lot of the camps, but was not really widely talked about, and that is athlete's foot. And this right here helped the GI deal with the burning and the itching and so forth and so on. The foot powder is primarily to help keep your feet dry. This was to help deal with the athlete's foot. As I said, we, have, we had the whisk brush here for cleaning your uniform, and we have a nice pair of civilian sunglasses. You were allowed a few civilian items. So that's what we have right here. Now underneath all of that is this really cool military apron shelf. The idea behind this was that, and we'll pull the tag out here so you can kind of see how it works here. The idea behind this was that, you know, you go into the bathroom in your barracks and you're going to get ready in the morning and gosh, there's really no shelf space and the sinks are crowded and so forth and so on. You just simply strap on this apron and you can hold your razor, your soap, your shaving cream, everything you would need to get ready in the morning. Look at this happy GI here. He's so, so happy because he's got his, his shelf on and he has all his stuff right at his his uh, beck and call, if you will. What's cool is this is original. It came, you know, still has the original card with it. it has this nice little kind of uh, emblem up here. It says U.S. military apron, very official like, and that. This was definitely something that was probably purchased by a loved one and sent with all the best intentions. And then the GI probably got it and said, mm, I don't think I can ever use this, but thanks anyways. Now this towel right here, this kind of overlapping into both compartments, this is a hand towel or a huck towel. This was something you'd be issued. And these are really, really hard to find. So I was very grateful that I was able to turn this up at a military show. 
just adds that, once again, that extra level into my Foot Locker display. Now coming down here, I mentioned that we have a Rayovac, or not Rayovac, a uh, Ever Ready flashlight. It's just a standard 1939, 1940 model flashlight in this kind of PX bag here. Something, once again, the GI could have picked up at the PX, and it works. It's really cool. I'm not going to take the time to take it out because it's just a common light, but one bit of advice I want to give all of you is if you have battery-operated things in your collection, please test them out. See if they work, but then take the batteries out. The reason I say this is oftentimes we leave batteries in and we don't get that item out for months or years and those batteries have a tendency to decay and they can ruin the item. So please test the item and then take the batteries out, leave them out, and then, you know, have them available to put back in if, if so needed. So now next to here, we have this little pile of handkerchiefs. Uh, on top, we have a lighter. This is a Park lighter. There were a couple major brands used during World War II. You had Park, Zippo, Bowers. All of them were real popular with the GIs. Uh, this is the Park. It's just the standard flip top. It actually, if I can do this one handed here, get that spark going. There it is. It actually sparks. I put in a new flint. Uh, everything works on it. I just don't have lighter fluid in it because, you know, I don't use it. So the lighter fluid tends to evaporate. So there's no point in, in filling it up. But this was a cool find. Uh, vintage clothing store in a really cluttered display case for 50 cents. I could not believe the person thought I was crazy buying this kind of worn out old lighter, but you know, I would just, I was ecstatic. Neat piece. Now, next to it, as I said, we have a pocket watch. This is a PX pocket watch. A lot of GIs were kind of in that transition period. Some preferred wrist watches, some still preferred the old pocket watch. This is a nice example right here. I'll set that over there. Now, we'll get to that in just a moment. We have handkerchiefs. Most of us have seen these OD green handkerchiefs. These are pretty much your standard issue, but I wanted to show you this right here. This is really cool. This is a white handkerchief with a laundry number, a GI's laundry number right there on this handkerchief. You can see it's got kind of a nice, nice patterning to it, but this just shows you that GI's did keep certain civilian items in their foot locker or on them. Right here, this is a, a just a classic example. I found this at a small military show, and I thought this was just a neat representation to show that they did use white handkerchiefs in their foot lockers and on their person. Now, underneath this, we have a stash of coins. We have four silver half dollars. The reason these are in here is because some GIs related stories about how they would hide money in their foot locker. And they did this because if they got carried away gambling, if they went out on the town and got rolled and lost all their money, they would at least have something to tide them over until their next um, month's pay period came in, if you will, or pay came in. And this GI here, he'd have $2. $2 is not a lot of money in today's terms, but back then that could carry you quite far. So, you know, it's just kind of hidden in amongst the handkerchiefs. Now. This bag right here, this is a project I'm working on. In this bag right here, we have the soldier's vice. Most soldiers smoked cigarettes, but some smoked a pipe. This is a pipe bag with the pipe in it. The one thing I'm missing, though, is I'm missing the pipe cleaners, and I'm missing uh, period pipe uh, tobacco or smoking tobacco. I'm going to look for it. It hasn't been high on my list to look for, but now I'm kind of coming around to it, so I'm going to be looking for some pipe tobacco to complete out my pipe kit here. Now, finally, the last couple items, we talked about tooth care. We have a period toothbrush. It's just a standard civilian toothbrush from the 1940s. We have tooth powder. We have dental floss in this little container right here. It's really cool. It's called New Era Dental Floss by Johnson & Johnson. And then we also have a bottle of Listerine mouthwash. Still has the original label. It's coming detached a little bit. I'm going to have to fix that. It's really cool. It's empty which I actually appreciate it being empty because I don't run the risk of leakage all over the foot locker. So that's your tooth care area. A couple other sundry items. We have this uh, really nice pocket watch here. Uh, most GIs would not be caught dead without a pocket watch. It's got the nice kind of loop here on the back side. Just a beautiful, beautiful period pocket watch. And we also have for body care this container. It's a soap container, United States Army, PX purchase. But then inside of this, we'll bring this over here and show you. Inside we have a bar of wartime palm olive. This is the smaller size, perfect for the GI. Once again, just a nice addition. Well, everybody, that concludes the kind of personal hygiene side. Now that's all disassembled. If there's anything on here that I went too quickly over or anything you want to see up close or, or have me talk a little bit more about, leave it in the comment section and I'll be happy to address it 
in the next video. The next video we'll focus on, which is kind of cluttered up, sorry about that, on this side here, which is more of your equipment care side. So until then, thanks for watching. Well, everyone, thanks for watching part one of this three-part series on the GI Foot Locker. Please leave a comment if you like to. I love hearing from all of you and interacting with all of you. Like if you liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. But if you disliked it, please let me know why, because I'm always looking for ways to improve my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, uh, please do so. Let your friends know. Let your family know. Let your pets know. I'm always looking for new subscribers because it's so much fun being able to share this information and share these really unique items within this collection. Well, everyone, until next time, this is Steve reminding all of you to keep them rolling.